We, Canadian and Israeli participants in the March of the Living, have come together to celebrate Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day. Last night and today, during Yom Hazikaron, we remembered those who exposed themselves to mortal danger in the days of struggle prior to the establishment of the State of Israel, and the soldiers of the Tzahal, the Israel Defense Force, who fell in the wars of Israel beginning in 1948, 64 years ago. Today, a siren reverberated throughout the entire country. Traffic came to a halt. All public life stopped as everyone stood for two minutes of silence. Today, we begin our Yom Hazmalat celebration with the knowledge that our Israeli brothers and sisters paid a dear price for their independence, a price that we solemnly and respectfully acknowledge today. Here we stand in the vicinity of Latrun, where the Battle of 1948 was crucial in Israel's struggle for independence. The heroic efforts of the newly created IDF forces in this vicinity created the momentum for opening the way to convoys full of food, fuel, arms, and other supplies to the besieged city of Jerusalem. 64 years ago, a young 20-year-old platoon leader named Ariel Sharon nearly died in this same area. In a wadi barely visible from the road, where rushes now separate bright green vineyards from golden brown fields of green, he was pinned down for hours with his men. He was shot in the stomach and thigh. His radio was destroyed, and he did not hear the order to withdraw. It was only when he saw enemy soldiers on the hills behind him that he realized that he and his remaining men had been left behind, alone. It was a very hot day, and all around it was burning. The fields were on fire, and only four of 35 men were alive and unwounded. I was dead thirsty. I was so thirsty that I felt I'll not have the power to make it. This was the hardest thing I've ever done. Though many fell in that battle, it was not until 1967 that Latrun was finally captured during the first days of the Six Day War. We will now recite a poem in honor of the memory of those brave and courageous soldiers who fell in battle here in this area in 1948 and in 1967. And in honor of all the heroic soldiers who sacrificed their lives in defense of the state of Israel and the founding of the Jewish state. The Parade of the Fallen. They come from the mountains, from the valley, from the desert. They come, names, faces, eyes, and stand for the parade. They come with a masculine step, strong and tan. They emerge from the shattered plains and from the burnt tanks. They rise from behind the rocks, from across the dunes, from connecting ditches. Brave as lions, tough as tigers, swift as eagles. And they pass one by one between two rows of angels who feed them candy and place flowers around their necks. And I look at them and all of them are happy. These, These are, are my, my brothers, brothers. My, my brothers. brothers. And they meet one another, black eyes and blue and brown. And they remind one another of names and weapons and places and pour each other cups of coffee and tea. And they shout out suddenly, calling, how are you doing, man? And they meet friends and comrades in the crowd. And the officers slap the private shoulders and the private shake the officers' hands. And they burst into song and clap their hands. And the meeting lasts a day and a night, a day and a night, because there has never been a group like this in heaven. And then, suddenly, they hear familiar voices crying, and they look homeward at fathers and mothers, at wives, children, brothers, and sisters. And their faces are silent, and they stand confused. And then someone quickly whispers, forgive us, we had to. We won the battles, and now we are resting. These, These are, my are my brothers, brothers my, my brothers. brothers. And so they stand, light on their faces, and only God alone passes among them, with eyes filled with tears, kissing their wounds. And God says in a trembling voice to the white angels, These, These are, are my, my children. children. These, These are, are my children. children. 64 years ago today, 
Surrounded by hostile nations from all sides, David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, stood in Tel Aviv and read from the Scroll of Independence. The land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here, their spiritual, religious, and national identity was formed. Here they achieved independence and created a culture of national and universal significance. Here, they wrote and gave the Bible to the world. Exiled from the land of Israel, the Jewish people remained faithful to it in all the countries of their dispersion, never ceasing to pray and hope for their return and the restoration of their national freedom.
Despite the many sat setbacks and the suffering we have endured through the generations, we have come this far because we never gave up. We now continue to persevere in our struggle for peace in our land. As the song says, the melody cannot cease. We must continue to play it. 